Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In a previous video, we talked about our keys rig at the gathering place with the Sunday sounds on the iPad and the Artoria Key Lab 88 Essential. Today, I'm going to talk about how to connect the two and get everything programmed so your controls work along with the software. So this is the Artoria Key Lab 88 Essential Mini Controller. It has worked great when I've used it before. I am not a keys player, so if you hear any sounds, it's because maybe I played a C. But this keyboard has worked really well. Uh, I really like it. It's a really great price point. A lot of piano players that I've had use this before have said that it feels really good even though it's not weighted keys. So this is a really good price point for churches to be able to get into having a good sound system along with the software on the iPad from Sunday Sounds. So we're gonna talk about how to connect these up, make all the MIDI controls work so that you can move a fader and get what you need. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the Artoria software on my laptop. So I've got my laptop here, iPad here. We're gonna start on the laptop. So part of the problem is initially out of the box, your pads here, your drum pads here are actually connected to some of the keys on the keyboard. So if you hit a drum pad, it plays that note on the keyboard. So if you wanna program these to something else, you first have to change these from their original programming. And I'm gonna show you what needs to happen over here. So let's dive into the computer. So we are in the MIDI Control Center software from Artoria. The link for that will be in the description so you can go download that. It's also where you'll wanna do any firmware updates or anything like that on your keyboard. So as a default, it comes like this. So in the side of the software, it shows you all of your sections, anything that has this light blue line around it means that it can be, its programming can be changed within the software. So you can see these three buttons here. You can see all of our faders and our knobs. You can also see these here. You can actually change the keyboard, but we're not gonna do that. The only thing that we, we really wanna concern ourselves with changing is these three buttons, or sorry, these eight buttons right here and how they are programmed. So we've got our first one connected here and you see its mode is selected as MIDI note. And if we were in the Sunday Sound software right now, if I hit this first button, it would play a C because it is connected to this low C on the keyboard down here. Well, I wanna ditch that. The way to do that is the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on where it says mode and we're gonna change that to switched control. Once we're there, we can leave the gate, we can switch the channel to user, and then we're gonna come down here to this CC number. And I'm gonna change that to one of these undefined ones. So all you can see the definitions for a lot of the other ones. I'm gonna change this to number 20 because it's undefined and open. And then I'm gonna go do that for each one of these. So let me do that real quick. We wanna make sure that each pad gets set to a different undefined number. So my first one I set to 20, this next one I set to 21, and I'm just gonna go down the line with the rest of these, setting channel to user and setting my numbers to undefined and just going down the line. All right, so now that that's all done, I've got each one of these set to a different uh, CC number. So 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. You can also change the colors of the pads and all that sort of stuff if you wanna do that all within here. But we want our mode set to switched control, the channel set to user, and the CC number set to one of the undefined ones and just go in order. They can't all be set to the same one. So once we've done that, those are the only changes that we need to make there. So we wanna come over here into our local templates. We're gonna click save as, and I'm gonna call this TGP real. I've tried a couple different ways of this so you can see the other ones that are in there. So we're gonna do that TGP real, and then we're just gonna click off so it saves there. The next thing we have to do is, this is just the local template. So these are templates that are saved on the computer right here. We wanna go ahead and now load it to our keyboard. So I'm gonna select user one, and I'm gonna click with TGP Reel selected, 
and user one selected, I'm gonna click store two. Now that that's all done, we're done with the computer and now we're gonna switch over to the iPad and get into the MIDI learning software on there. All right, so now we got the iPad pulled up and you can see we're in the software for Sunday Sounds now. This is what it looks like on our iPad. This is not an expensive iPad. This can run on a 10th gen original one, anything like that. Uh, it runs really well. You don't need one of the iPad Pros or anything. Go get an iPad Air or something like that and you've got a pretty simple rig. We have our USB dongle plugged in with this. I also normally have this running USB out to our Presonus audio box that then sends into our system. Right now, it's just playing through the sound on the iPad as I'm sitting here in my house. So now that we're inside the software, now we wanna make our changes. Now, first thing I wanna do is I'm actually gonna go onto the keyboard, and I hope you can see this. You may not be able to. Let's move the iPad. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna click map select on the keyboard. And then I'm gonna select this, num this user one pad. If our regular one over here is the default, the analog lab, that's our default. But I saved our program that we want to user one. So I'm gonna click map select and then select user one. And then I can turn off, and in the window you'll see, or not, you can't see this here, but when you do this you'll see, it says TGP Real now in our little window right there. And then I'm gonna turn off Map Select and we're good to go. So now within the iPad, we're gonna come over and to do our, our MIDI control, what we wanna do is we want to click on the three lines that are in the top right corner, and then you see your settings and your options come in here, and we are going to click MIDI Learn. And now we can see in this window, we've got options for all the things that we want to assign. So for instance, let's say I wanted to assign this first fader to this sustain channel number seven fader. All I have to do is I tap on the fader I want to assign in my software, and then I just move the fader or do something, if I push a button or whatever it might be, and you see my channel number change. That's actually not what I wanted assigned to, so I'm gonna change it back. So we're gonna go to tap on the one that you want to assign, and then I want this going to my very first fader right here, and I slide the fader and now it's assigned. So I'm gonna go to number two and assign it. Number three, four, and number five. So you can see all of those are assigned there. Now, what I've done, the reason I wanted these pads separated is because within Sunday Sounds, you can just have it play a pad sound. It's got the tonic pads that can be played, and I wanted to assign these pads to my major chords. So all I wanted to do was click on C and assign it to this first pad. And you can see I already have those assigned there. All I have to do is click on the one I'm wanting to assign, and then I'm gonna push the button. So I've got our seven major chords assigned there, and then I've got this last pad, my eighth one, assigned to toggle to turn the pads on and off. I also have my volume um, set. I have a master volume up in the top right corner that is assigned to my last fader on the keyboard, and I have the pad volume assigned to the fader next to it, and then I have some of these dials assigned to the brightness and the shimmer for that. And then obviously we have our mod wheel assigned over here. So that's all it takes to assign these MIDI controls. You select what you're wanting to assign within the software by just clicking on it. And then you click whichever button or move whichever fader or turn whichever knob you're wanting to assign that to. Then we're gonna click done. And now we're back in the window. So I'm gonna move my first parameter knob and you see we are good to go. I'm moving this knob and that is moving. I'm moving that knob and all the way down the line, you can see they're connected to what I want it to be connected to. Here's my pad volume. Here's my master volume up in the top right corner. And here's the important part. Now that I hit that button, you don't hear a note play anymore. And I still have control. It was originally assigned to these first eight from C through those first eight ones would play together, and if I just turn something off, they weren't playing at all. Now I have full 
control down there and I can select my pads to whichever note I want and I can hit that last one and you can hear the pads start playing. I also have control with these knobs here to up the brightness and to add some more shimmer. So I have all of that control now from the keyboard. That's how you assign all of these pieces. It's really simple to do. And the first thing is the most complex of it, and that's making sure you go into the software on the computer so you can separate these out and define these properly. But then you have control and can put these exactly where you want them to be. Two other buttons that I have assigned in here are these two buttons right here um, next to my faders and stuff. And I have them assigned to previous and next patch. Actually, they're not assigned right now. One second, let's go do that. MIDI learn, I'm gonna click previous patch right here, select next patch and select that one. Then I'm gonna click done. So now what that does is it allows me to switch between the patches. So you can go into uh, your software here and we could actually create a set list. So if you wanted to do a set list that had the sounds that you wanted for each song for that set list, you can create that in there. Right now I've just got the basic ones, the starter patches that come in, but this allows me to switch between back and forth between those patches with those numbers there. And I just have everything labeled on the keyboard. So those are the last two buttons that I have assigned along with everything else. So now I can play whatever needs to happen here. I can switch back and forth between my patches. I can control my volumes, I can control the brightness and the shimmer. I can change my chords that are for the pad and I can play them all from right here on the keyboard. I hope that was really helpful to you. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Do all the things that YouTube tells you to do. Like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.